try now. Amen. I'll use my preacher voice. This morning, the scripture, as you probably have noticed, is a continuation of the scriptures from last week. And that's what we get when we follow the lectionary. We have continuity. We have stories that go together. We have a narrative. We have a lesson that continues to unfold. But as we know, and uh, we constantly stop, the Bible is a very complex book. And the parables, especially, are not very simple. They require some unfolding, some unpacking. And today's parable is connected somewhat, uh, connected actually greatly to last Sunday's uh, parable of the sower. But it's really paradoxic there in, in the way that they deal with the imagery of weeds. And the summer has been the summer of weeds for me. I've been doing a lot of gardening. <laughs> And then at UM Army, we spend a whole day weeding too. So the tips of my fingers, you know when you're weeding, the tips of my fingers get really sore, yes. So it's been the summer of weeding. And the weeding in this parable today, it's a little bit different from last Sunday. As you remember last Sunday, we were reminded that the mustard seed was actually considered a weed because it was so tiny and it grew up so big and it spread that was even forbidden in those days to be planted in a field because it would easily get into your neighbor's field and take over, right? So there's this element of, of weed that is very negative because it spreads and it spreads out of control that last Sunday Jesus used in a positive light. As you remember, the metaphor for the kingdom of God was the mustard seed. So the kingdom of God is like mustard seed in a way. The kingdom of God is like a weed that was spread and it's out of control. So that's a good way, right, of thinking of weed and the metaphor of weed. But this Sunday, it's a little bit different. This Sunday, Jesus is coming around saying, well, and that's the beauty, right, of, of spirituality. That's the beauty of Christianity. That's the beauty of the lessons that Jesus teaches us that it's not one dimensional. You always have to keep turning it on its side and learning something new. That's why the book that we have, the Bible, has survived thousands of years. You know, the first part of the book for possibly 4,000 years, those stories, and the New Testament for two, over 2,000 years. So Jesus is turning the story around and he's saying, well, and there are the weeds that you should be really careful with. Because those are the weeds that the enemy, the devil, the opposer, sows in our healthy field among the good seeds. And those weeds will grow. And you have to be careful because if you pull them out, you might pull out the good plants. And not just that, you may be pulling out good plants, think that they are weeds. Because the word in the scriptures for weed, it's not the general umbrella of weed. It's, I think, darnel, I think that's the word for it. But it's one particular weed that looks very much like wheat. So wheat, the good seed, right? Nourishing that we need for our sustenance. And then this other seed that grows up just like it, next to it. And in its infancy, you can't really tell the difference. So Jesus is throwing a curve here. He's saying, you know, yes, there are some other bad weeds. And you have to be careful. Because you might destroy the good plants in the process of weeding them out. So actually, the message this morning is very hopeful because it says, do not worry, I am the gardener. Gardener, I am the one in charge of taking those bad seeds out. Do not worry. So it's a wonderful message 
of hope this morning, isn't it? That we don't have to do what I've been trying so hard in my own garden every day there, pulling them out. Because it is God's job, not our job. Our job is to be what? To be the good seed. Our job, like the seed of wheat in the field, is to spring up and to grow strong and to bear fruit. Even to the peril of our own lives. Because the wheat needs to die, so we have bread. Right? So there's a wonderful message of hope this morning. And I was very keen on leaving, leaving you today and saying, that's it. Uh, let's do some work in the Ed building. Great hope. Do not worry. Just be good weeds. Good seeds, as you are. <laughs> Freudian slip, maybe. And do not worry about the bad weeds around us. But there's another angle there that I wanted to offer you for your reflection this morning, which is the bad seeds inside of us for us to turn inward. Since we are not to worry about who is what next to us or what they're doing, if they're bad or if they're good, let us turn in, turn in and look at the own seeds we have inside. And some of them are not so good. Right? I don't know about you, but I must confess, sometimes I get very frustrated and I get short-tempered and I get angry. Um, I have more shortcomings. I know I always come across as this perfect pastor, this wonderful, happy-go-lucky guy, but sometimes uh, you know, some of those bad seeds I have within me spring up very quickly and they spread like awful weed. So the encouragement beyond the let God be the gardener, be the good seed, is look within and see if you could do some weeding within. Be very careful, right? Be very kind to yourself. I'm not encouraging self-hatred and I'm not telling you that your nature is sinful and dreadful. My personal theology goes completely against that. I like to stick to Genesis that you were made in the image of God and your nature is good and you can be very fruitful and God's presence in the world, in your household, in your neighborhood, in your place of work. But let's look within and weed out whatever is trying to choke because that's one of the characteristics of, of weed isn't it? Is that they choke and they wrap themselves around the, the plants that are not as aggressive as they are and choke them to death. So be watchful that your seeds within, they are not the greatest of seeds, are not getting a lot of water, a lot of tension, a lot of nourishment. And in that process, strangling the good that you have with them. And I wanted to leave you with that too, but there's more. <laughs> Bear with me. Because this Sunday, this weekend, this whole weekend, it's a weekend of prayer for the children that have migrated into this country. They are actually perceived by many as weeds, as tiny little weeds that we have to get rid of because if we allow them to take root in this land, this fertile, blessed land that is the United States of America, they will spread and they will choke up all the good and dry up all our resources. That is a rhetoric that I'm not making it up. It's a narrative, it's an idea, it's a story that is in the news. Some politicians, some prominent voices have essentially, maybe not necessarily using those words, but they're so 
vitriolic and so against the presence of these children in this country. And I, I knew that this could be very challenging because in this church we are very blessed to have the full spectrum of political ideals and positions, right? At least is the sense that I get and the conversations that I get that we have people from the very far left to the very far right. And diversity is a wonderful blessing to a, any healthy environment. If you have a monoculture, if you have just one type of people, one type of plant, the soil will get very poor. And eventually, even that, that kind of plant will die because it's not in a diverse environment. So I think we're very blessed by it, having everybody here in this community of faith. But there are some challenges because sometimes what I may say may seem like I'm going against some of you. I do have a position in that spectrum. Uh, I will confess to you that when I became an American citizen in 2002, the first act I, I, I took as an American citizen was to register uh, as a voting citizen right outside the place where I got, you know, my, my, my citizenship. They had a little booth. First thing I did, I signed up and I marked independent. So, officially, I'm independent and may, I may sound to you sometimes like a flaming liberal. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Uh, it is not my position to tell you what to think as I've said that many times before, or to convince you of a political platform or idea. But it's my job, especially when the news is addressing a situation that is part of this country, to address it, to start the conversation. So what I say is not the gospel. The gospel was read beautifully by our brother, Paul Pilecki. What I say is not the gospel, it may be good news, and I hope it is good news, but don't take it verbatim. Think about it. Okay. Talk about it. Read about it. And what I have read about it, especially from the United Methodist News, we have, we have a United Methodist presence in Honduras, which is a country where 70% of these children are from. And I was educated this week about the reasons why this country is in such horrible state that these children are crossing the continent and crossing the desert and the river to come into this country. And there are some facts that are not very comfortable to me as an American citizen because it Im implicates me as an American citizen. And there are some facts that are not being shared in the news about why Honduras is in such awful state. The history, as normally tends to be, especially in the media, is forgotten. It's not addressed. And some facts I'm going to share with you about the history of Honduras is that for the last 500 years, it has been exploited, as many countries, many places have been exploited. First was by the Spanish colonizers that got there, and their only interest was to take whatever was good and bring it to Europe. And after that, many other waves of people coming in and taking advantage of the country. A indicting fact that I learned this week is that the American Embassy in Honduras was not in the capital area. It was actually very remotely placed, but placed purposely next to gold mines. Gold mines controlled by our corporations, American corporations. 
which is actually ceasing to be because multinational corporations at one point used to be from one country or from another, but now they don't even have allegiance to a particular nation. Oftentimes, the corporations that claim to be American are not even paying taxes in the U.S. Are not blessing this country with the resources anymore. They are just hoarding to their CEOs and their shareholders in some game island or Swiss bank, not even sharing with the people here. But at one point, it did, and the American embassy was right there. So, dear friends, the situation with these children is not as simple as it may seem. It's not some crazy parents deciding to send their children off at an impossible journey to take advantage of the resources we have here in this country. I don't know if you had to place or send your child on a bus or on an airplane journey somewhere. My daughter's in California, going to college there. And it's hard for me when she goes back home. I stand until she goes through security and I can longer see her. And I'm always worried and the first thing I ask her to do is when she gets to the other side is to call me. So I don't know about you, but as a parent, it is hard for me to send my daughter on a safe airplane with an American passport, she's American, all of that, to go to college. And, you know, she's not 10 years old, she's 20, soon to be 21. So can you imagine how heart-wrenching it must be and how horrible the situation must be in these countries for these parents and these families to send their children our way that it cannot possibly be a light decision. The situation must be so hard for these families that they are willing to risk their own lives and the lives of their children to come here. It is not as simple as it may be portrayed out there. And my intention this morning is not to tell you what to think, but ask you to please look deeply at the full picture. Why are these countries in such peril? Another little unknown and unpublicized fact is that uh, we are the largest consumer of illicit drugs. Cocaine being a big one. Guess what country is the perfect spot for cocaine coming from South America? So from South America to guess what? Honduras. That's where it stops on its way to the US. If we don't have the demand here, what happens? Honduras wouldn't be a place for so much violence because unfortunately that's what happened, right? Drugs automatically produce and breed violence. That's another fact I wanted to share with you this morning. And I know that this is doing kind of like perhaps what Jesus did with the story of the weed. Weed is good, but weed is bad. And this morning I'm saying, be hopeful. God is the gardener. Take care of yourself as a good, good seed. Bear fruit. But at the same time, I'm telling you, we have some weeds within, and we have some systemic weeds in our society that we have to be very careful not to get rid of them and the good plants with it. So I'm not saying corporations are completely evil. There are some companies that are good, and we need them, right? We need those products. We need those jobs. We need this country. This is a blessed country. So I'm not saying 
anarchy, I'm saying let us keep looking. Looking at the story, this parable that we have today of these children coming in towards us, into our country. They are perceived as weeds by many of our leaders, but could be the wheat, the good seed that we need as a nation to flourish. That's the good news and the challenge this morning. Let us be very discerning, trusting God, and being very hospitable. Because in the parable, there's also another word that I want to bring to your attention because it's translated as, let those weeds be. And the word let is also the same word there, and I don't know if it's the Hebrew or the, or the Greek. It doesn't matter. But the original word there means forgive. So even if you think that these children, because they are children, and the average age is about 10, and ranging from two years of age you know, to 14, 15, 16, a little bit later, even if you think that these children are breaking the law, the parable this morning calls us to forgive even what we think is a weed. Because it's not our job to condemn. Amen? Amen.